This is One on One. Beth Jansen is Executive Director of the Tribeca Film Institute. How are you doing? Good. You Very just good. told me before we get on the air, you are not from New York originally, even though you have that New York attitude. You're from? Yeah, I'm from Montreal originally. Which is so nice. Yeah, well, we all are <laughs> up there. <laughs> uh, when did we get here? You said about 15 years ago yeah, we got Yeah, 15 here. years ago. Why'd you mm -hmm. come here? Uh, why does anyone come to New York, you know? Because it's the center of all, you know, cultural excitement. <laughs> the Tribeca thing is a big part of yes. this whole story. Yeah. Um, the Tribeca Film Institute, put it in perspective. The Tribeca Film Institute is, uh, we're the affiliate of the Tribeca Film Festival. So we don't run the festival, but what we do is we work year round to um, support filmmakers. So we give grants to filmmakers, we do professional development for filmmakers, and we also teach filmmaking in New York City public schools and uh, do media literacy programs for young people. So we are much more under the radar, I think, than uh, the Tribeca Film Festival. Um, and we do, do most of our work outside of the mm. festival time. Talk about, uh, go back to the part about the schools, the initiative called Tribeca Teaches. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you teach and whom, who do you teach? Uh, you know, <clears throat> that is a program that works with schools. So, um, and it's K through 12 now. Um, the program basically teaches media literacy and film production. Media literacy, I mean, I know from a, my perspective of media literacy, it's about TV media. What, what is yours? What is the Tribeca Film Institute's perspective? It is about understanding what you're seeing. You know, so it's uh, about being a critical thinker about any kind of media that you see, any moving image. Um, you know, obviously schools teach uh, critical thinking and, and just general literacy, but it's becoming more and more important as our world is uh, increasingly you know, inundated, we're inundated with, mm. uh, with images and that's really a primary way that kids are communicating. Um, and it's important that they learn how to be critical viewers of media, you know, um, because we want them to be able to, you know, be analytical about it and uh, not just sort of take everything at face value. We have a video clip. Um, this is Los Angeles after school program, right? It shows a new program that we just launched last year uh, in Los Angeles. It's our first program, Tribeca Teaches program outside of New York City. It's right. very exciting. Um, and it shows uh, some of the kids that we worked with there and the community that we were working in. Let's take a look at the clip and we'll talk about it right after this. You're talking about taking these kids and saying, here you can express your dreams in another way and on film. And we're living in an age where the internet and Facebook and Twitter and all these things that kids are aware of its power. It's important for Latinos to tell their own stories because they come from different places. From different places comes different stories. Really important. Yeah. Because. Because we need to, uh, you know, as we become more of a society that values images mm -hmm. and as we learn more and more from what we're seeing and not necessarily reading it's important that we give a wide range of kids the tools to be storytellers and to you know empower them to to be able to tell their own community stories um, and you know we the tools are becoming more and more ubiquitous i mean you can make a movie on your smartphone, yeah. um, you know, at this point. But it doesn't mean that you're going to be making the most effective film that you can. It doesn't mean you're going to be communicating, uh, you know, in the most creative or, um, you know, visually uh, captivating way. So that's what's exciting, you know. For you personally, I often ask people who come into the studio, not just about the program and about the work itself, but I ask them about themselves. Your passion, your love of film comes from where? You know, my passion is really um, about the power of storytelling. Um, I started in theater, um, you know, which is the home of you know, the birthplace, Pat. yeah, at the New York Shakespeare Festival um, under George Wolfe, actually, and, uh, you know, who's whose take on, on sort of uh, remixing stories uh, it was really compelling and still is fascinating. But the idea, the thing that I got frustrated there with was that um, the impact was limited because it was really, 
you know, each experience was really to that one audience that one night. And uh, with film and with, um, you know, transmedia, with other cross-platform storytelling, you have the opportunity to reach so many people. Um, you know, and I think it's a really, really important part of our society. Um, you know, we obviously in these elections are talking a lot about the economy, um, and of course, people need jobs. We need to make money to raise our families. Um, but the arts are also an essential part of a healthy society. You know, you cannot get by um, on on jobs alone and thrive. You know, as a creative, innovative culture. So. I tend to approach the work that we do as um, like cultural entrepreneurship, not, um, you know, and the return on investment that we look for is mm. is very real, but it's cultural, it's not financial. It's funny, people always ask how you measure. It's not always a quantitative measure. Right. Points well taken. Yeah. Uh, Beth Jansen, who's the executive director of the Tribeca Film Institute. I want to thank you very much for joining us. We thank appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thanks very much. We're at our Lincoln Center studio. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this. Thank you very much. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Medical Center, Berkeley College, TD Bank, Qualcare Inc., a local managed care company covering 750,000 New Jersey residents, the law firm of Gibbons PC, and by Verizon Communications. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com, Everything Jersey and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.